Yep. Okay, good morning, Mr. Findy and our classmates. Today, my group, uh, Alejandro and Corey and me, will present the evidence of Barrett Sugar. Okay, the, now, here is an introduction. We are going to first talk about uh, the sugar overview, uh, how it's made. Then we are going to present the problems of the sugar in the humans, and then we are going to suggest some solutions. Here are now we are going to present the sugar overview, how it's made. Okay. Now Corey will present. Thank you. Okay, so it's made from 12 atoms of carbon, 22 atoms of hydrogen, 11 atoms of oxygen. It depends on the type of sugar, how these atoms are all arranged. Like for glucose and glucose, they're arranged differently. It is a carbohydrate. It's found in every fruit and vegetable naturally. It provides calories for your body to use as energy, but they have no nutritional value, so they're empty calories. Um, it's extracted from sugar cane or sugar beets, which are about 15% sugar each. And that's what's used to add sugar to most things, but there's also, of course, natural sugar and everything. And so on ingredient labels, there are just many, many different names of sugar. As you can see, there's 56 of them here. We don't need to actually read them, but instead of just writing sugar, um, what a lot of companies will do is they'll just put in like a, they'll just put in a different name. But these are all basically exactly the same. So like they'll say like, a, like evaporated like organic cane juice, which is just like exact, just basically sugar, but it sounds better. So companies like to do stuff like that to see what'll realize that it's sugar. Okay, so the difference between naturally occurring sugar and added sugar. So naturally occurring sugar is found in whole unprocessed foods such as milk, fruit, vegetables, and some grains. And added sugar is sugar added to processed foods or drinks besides like what's naturally in food. And the sugar they add can be like a naturally occurring sugar or it could be a processed sugar like um, high fructose corn syrup. And they add excess sugar to foods to make them sweeter and for other stuff. Okay, now Alejandro will present uh, and give you some examples where sugar can be found. Uh, natural sugars are, as Corey said, once again, uh, always found in fruits and vegetables and uh, all plants and photosynthesis. And then are man made or uh, man created sugars, which are processed and refined uh, in order to use it in different products, um, and one example of that is corn syrup. Now we will talk about some good stuff of the sugar. Uh, uh, sugar also, uh, it, can <laughs> it helps uh, foods last longer. Um, uh, uh, sugar makes uh, food taste better and sweet. Um, Foods are more appealing for humans, therefore um, people can sell products that have sugar easily. Um, an example where sugar can be used uh, in, in a good way is to, to mix it with yeast in order to make bread and make it uh, ripe. And it's, an, it's a very quick energy source, so um, whenever someone's feeling down or or tired of uh, the consumption of energy will uh, provide uh, energy for the, for the individual consuming sugar. Okay. Now we're gonna present a like basic question that we do to these problems. Like what is wrong with the sugar? How is sugar affecting health nationwide? How is the sugar industry targeting kids and younger generations. Okay, how did this nationwide and global problem start? Um, the World Health Organization uh, researched on uh, the bad and good things about the fat, and once it, they published um, an article about how um, fat work, uh, people were very skeptical and they, they were scared of it. So companies um, 
started reducing uh, their uh, reducing the fat they put in their products because people were refusing to buy them. Uh, the the big po problem with this is that when you take fat out of a product, uh, it tends to taste really bad. So therefore, uh, they exchange that fat that they have taken out with sugar. And surprisingly, sugar is worse than fat. So uh, the fat that wasn't used in, in those products now goes to other products in like really, really concentrated amounts. For example, cheese. Cheese is almost 100% fat. And uh, I want to uh, say something about uh, a calorie is not a calorie. Um, for, for example, if you uh, intake 100 calories on almonds versus 100 calories on coke, the, this uh, would not be the same for your body. Uh, almonds have fiber, therefore when they're ingested, um, the, the calories and the sugars in it will not go directly to the liver. Whether as coke that has no um, fibers at all will go directly to the liver, the liver will, will be very pumped up and it will have to produce fat and fat and fat and that's why uh, processed sugars and uh, unreal foods uh, are so uh, unhealthy. Okay, now we're going to present a video Look at the audio port. There's been a lot of talk lately about sugar being bad for you. Which is a bummer, because sugar is the best, right? I mean, who doesn't like sweet? You can eat on any other taste, and it's totally understandable.
good raincoat, this trend is reversible. Educated consumers can change the way food is manufactured simply by making better choices. Food companies only make what we buy, right? So avoiding food and drinks with added sugar will force the food industry to produce healthier food and stop adding sugar. But we have to start now because sugar In 1822, humans consumed only about 35 grams of sugar every five days, which now humans consume that much every seven hours, like in the U.S., I'm assuming. So most people don't even realize how much added sugar they're eating, and one can of Coca-Cola contains enough sugar to make you throw up, but they add ingredients to it, so that way, I think it's phosphoric acid, so that way it's more sour and like, your brain just doesn't recognize that there's all the sugar in it. So there's just so much added sugar that people don't even realize it's there. Now we're gonna watch another video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
talk about the impacts of the issue around the glory. So So the videos already kind of went into this, but I'm just going to do a few that they didn't really say. So it's bad for your teeth, and just, you probably know this just from going to the dentist. It can overload your liver, which can lead to fatty liver. It can and does lead to obesity. It can lead to insulin resistance, which is a step towards metabolic syndrome and diabetes, and take two diabetes. It can give you cancer because insulin is a key hormone in regulating take two, I mean, <laughs> cancer growth. And it causes massive dopamine release in your brain, which is what drugs do, so it's very addictive. Okay, Alejandro, we talk about the corporation. Uh, we believe that the worst problem about the sugar industry is its corporations. Um, according to the movie Fed Up, uh, sugar is almost eight times as addictive as the drug uh, cocaine. And, uh, and that's why corporations use it a lot. Uh, it gets people hooked on the product. Um, with, with the use of sugar, they can create uh, products that are more appealing to, to consumers. And um, it's sad because there's no regulations on, on sugar. So the uh, corporations can do whatever they want to sugar, they can hide names of sugars and in, in the ingredients in order for people to be confused and not uh, and to buy their products without knowing the actual contents of the foods they eat then. Um, another problem is the propaganda to children. Uh, companies uh, are targeting children from very, very young ages. First of all, because they're very easy um, targets, they, they can ask their parents to buy them their fruit roll up or their soda or whatever. And um, when these companies manage to, um, to hook up uh, people from really young ages, uh, it's better for them because they will have a lot of life, life lasting consumers. Um, if for children who start uh, the consumption of sugar since a very young age, uh, have very, very hard problems in order to get out of this, this problem. And um, in the last decade, uh, the type 2 diabetes. Uh, was uh, type 2 diabetes is a or was um, a disease only viewed in adults and in 1980 there were zero cases of children with this uh, disease while in 2010 the, um, the uh, number of children with this disease is around 57,000. Uh, there's a big controversy uh, with the World Health Organization. Um, uh, again, the World Health Organization was about to publish uh, sugar, um, a paper about sugar and how bad it is. But it is believed that the United States paid the World Health Organization for them not to publish it for their convenience for to maintain the the. the stable and that's why uh, nobody ever finds the percentage of daily value of sugars in, in the tax of whatever product. And that label that you just showed was actually the new label they're making. I'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, now after talking about all the problems in our health, we propose some solution what, that what can be done for this and how can people be edu educated about the negative side of sugar. Okay, so I'm going to talk about labeling now. So the new label has been proposed, which is the one on the right. 
Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different changes. The percents go on the left. And the main thing, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says sugars and then under it says added sugars. So it says sugars one gram. This one doesn't have any added sugars in it, but most products do. So I think that this new label is going to help the public better know like, what added sugars because some foods like naturally have sugar in it, like milk and stuff. Well, milk and stuff like ketchup. And they said like they add added sugar to ketchup. So I think consumers knowing how much added sugars in their product will help them make better decisions. And I think that this is one of the best solutions. Just And I think it's also going to scare some corporations into using less added sugar because they're going to know that the public knows exactly how much added sugar they're using. And then this under this is what Ecuador uses. So I'll let Andrew will explain that now. Um, in my country, in Ecuador, the government has implied uh, made a regulation for every single product on the market that has been processed or whatever. Uh, to have this labeling here, uh, there are three categories for sugar, fat, and salt. And so depending on the product, companies must uh, give information about uh, how high on sugar it is. And surprisingly, this uh, labeling has changed and influenced how people buy stuff uh, in my country. Um, really unhealthy products have decreased their, their uh, <laughs> consumption. Their consumption, yeah. And um, people are starting to to take this into consideration and uh, implementing a new and healthier diet every single day. Now we're going to present the video of, of how much you are, are we really eating. It's going to show you in the video. Yeah. And remember to the back of the beginning. Both looks how you can 